Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is The Day Mary Lost Jesus. Following the visit of the wise men to Jesus, Mary, and Joseph in Bethlehem, an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt. And stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 13. By now, Jesus was more than two years old. Matthew says, that night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary his mother and stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet. I called my son out of Egypt, Matthew chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. These words were prophesied by Hosea in chapter 11 and verse 1. It is clear that God knows how to warn us about danger and move us to a place of safety until danger passes us by. God still speaks to people through dreams. If God speaks to you in a dream about moving, go where he tells you to go and stay there until he speaks to you again. Matthew tells us when Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. The angel said, get up, take the child and his mother back to the land of Israel because those who were trying to kill the child are dead. Matthew chapter 2, verse 19 and 20. This is the third dream that God gave to Joseph to show him how to protect Jesus. If you are curious to know more about Jesus, ask God to give you a dream and tell you more about him. After this dream, Matthew tells us, the family went and lived in a town called Nazareth. This fulfilled what the prophets had said. He will be called a Nazarene, Matthew chapter 2 and verse 23. In Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 1, we read that a shoot from the stump of Jesse shall arise, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The Semitic word for branch is netzor, the root for the word Nazarene. This is a clear reference to Jesus as Messiah. At this point, Jesus is more than five years old. In Nazareth, Jesus learned to work with wood and stone in Joseph's workshop. He will spend all of his teenage years in Nazareth, learning to work with his hands. Most Bibles use the word carpenter to describe the trade Jesus learned. But the word Mark used is tecton, which denotes one who was skilled in all the trades of building. If you are a hardworking person, Jesus knows what your days are like. Luke tells us the child grew and became strong with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Luke chapter 2 and verse 40. There's nothing more important than having the favor of God upon our life. I release an awareness to you of living with the favor of God upon your life. Mary and Joseph set a good example for Jesus to follow as they attended the festivals in Jerusalem. Luke tells us, Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of Passover, and when he was 12 years old, they went up according to the custom. Luke chapter 2, verse 41 and 42. It was around 12 years of age that parents began to prepare their boys to become known as sons of the covenant or sons of the law. On this visit to Jerusalem, Jesus appears to have awakened to his destiny. Luke says, when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem and his parents did not know it, Luke chapter 2 and verse 43. Frequently, students between the ages of 10 and 13 
experience their first spiritual awakening. If you have a student in this age range, be sure to help them explore the great spiritual questions of life. I had an experience that awakened my spiritual curiosity when I was 12. If you are a teenager, ask God to give you a spiritual experience that will awaken you to the will of God for your life. Now, it was not unusual for pilgrims to travel in groups of families. When the festivals were over, sometimes women and younger children would start the journey home earlier in the day at a slower pace. The men would catch up with the rest of the family later in the afternoon. Luke says, supposing Jesus to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him amongst their relatives and acquaintances. And they did not find him. They returned to Jerusalem, searching for him. Luke chapter 2, verse 44 and 45. After all the messages from Gabriel and the dreams that God had given to Mary and Joseph, the thought of losing Jesus must have been terrifying to them. It took them a full three days to find Jesus. This is an early picture to us that in the future, Jesus will be in a grave for three days in Jerusalem. Luke says, after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting amongst the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. Luke chapter 2 verse 46 and 47. Jesus is ready to amaze you with his understanding and with the answers he has for all your questions about him. What a relief it must have been for Mary and Joseph to find Jesus in the temple sitting with the sages. And when they found Jesus, they had mixed emotions going through their mind all at the same time. Luke puts it this way, When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. Luke chapter 2 and verse 48. The answer Jesus gave them sent a shockwave to everyone who heard his response. Jesus says to his mother and everyone listening, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? Luke chapter 2 and verse 49. There are many layers to this reply. The most important point to grasp is that Jesus had just distanced himself from Joseph. He did this by identifying God as his father. Helping Mary find Jesus and then taking them safely back to Nazareth is the last recorded activity of Joseph in the Bible. From this moment on, Jesus referred to God as his father and that following his father's will is the main purpose in coming to earth. Some older translations uh, have Jesus saying, did you not know I must be about my father's business. The most literal translation is, I must be about my father. Learning to do father's will is the most important discovery we can make in life. Luke says they did not understand the saying that Jesus had spoken to them. Luke chapter 2 and verse 50. If you decide to dedicate your life to the will of God, it is most likely that people will not understand you, but you will have the assurance in your heart that the favor of God is upon your life. Luke says, his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. Luke chapter 2 and verse 51. Mary knew that although she had found Jesus, The day would soon come when she would need to let go of her son and allow him to fulfill the purposes of God upon his life. 
in order for her son to become the savior of the world as Gabriel had announced, she would need to give him back to God. The next 18 years of Jesus' life, as he matured into God's will, are described by Luke in this way. Jesus kept increasing in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with man. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. Jesus modeled for us four important areas of growth. To do God's will, we must grow in wisdom and in physical strength. We must be awakened spiritually to walk in the ways and will of God and build relationships that draw people to God. This is what Jesus taught his followers to do in the most important sermon that he preached. He said to his followers, You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 and 14. He said we are to let our light be shine before others, that they may see our good works and give glory to our Father who is in heaven. Matthew verse, chapter 5 and verse 16. In G, indeed, Jesus became a light to all the people of the world. Next week, we'll continue to study the life Jesus modeled. Before I leave you, let me pray for you. You may have lost a child to disobedience and your heart is broken. Uh, this week, I prayed for a daughter who had left home. And after I prayed with that mama, that same afternoon, her daughter came home. I call your wayward children back to your home and back to the ways of God. I prayed for parents who are having difficulty releasing one of their children to answer the call of God on their life. Mary knows how you feel. Mama, let your child go and walk in the will of God. Your child will bring you great joy. I believe there are young people listening to this message, especially between the ages of 10 and 13, and something in your heart has warmed as you have listened to me speak today. The Holy Spirit is awakening you to your spiritual destiny. Say yes to God, even if you don't know what it means at this moment. He will guide you into his will for your life. Father, release favor upon young people whose hearts are open to you right now. Open doors for them that only you can open. If God has spoken to you this, through this message, write to me. And share with me what God has said to you. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled.